What up, y'all? This your boy Ace here, and welcome to Afternoon's Delight. I wanted to definitely make sure I did this video because I didn't get a chance to do it when the deal was announced that SmackDown was going to um, back the USA Network uh, starting next fall. Um, and, I, and I was going to do a video for that, uh, but I didn't get a chance to. So, I'm in the process right now of uploading last week's uh, Halloween Havoc videos. And there was only a few that I had to do from last week. It wasn't a super busy week. So, I'm in the middle of getting those up right now. So, once those are done, I'm probably going to put this up. Because I still got to edit uh, level up, which I'm planning on putting up as well. And then I'm going to put up Dynamite probably tomorrow. Uh, so, I could get back. I should be back in line with where I'm at because... The, I didn't have too many raw videos to do too, and I had recorded those last night, so we should be back on track to getting everything up on time this week. Uh, because I've been behind like a week for a while now with with, with my content, so hopefully everything's back up to speed. But let's let's talk about this deal, man. Um, what a huge deal, by the way, for the WWE and the CW. Locking in the deal with NXT. Yes, you heard me right. NXT, starting next season, will be on the CW and not the USA Network. And to me, this is a huge deal. This is a huge, huge, huge deal for both sides. Not just the WWE, but also the CW as well. Um, I mean, it is huge. It is huge, bro. And the reason why I'm saying it's huge is because let's let's look at it from the CW. I mean, um, the 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 the, the WWE side first with NXT. Um, when NXT came from the WWE Network, which was where it was at for a few years there when nxt came to the usa network remember it started airing on wednesdays against dynamite and basically what we heard was that they had did that to kind of kind of buffer off everything that was going on with aew right and AEW started out kicking their asses, and they weren't winning. And so they ended up moving it back to Tuesdays, where they've been kind of thriving ever since. Moving back to Tuesdays, they got away from Dynamite, and their audience slowly over the last two years has been building up pretty good. You know what I mean? So now we get to this point with NXT. So... NXT, like I said, it started off on Sci-Fi after they took over for ECW, right? Remember when it was ECW and all that other stuff? It was uh, e, uh, ECW, and then it became NXT. And it, it took over for Florida Championship Wrestling, which was the WWE's developmental uh, territory at the time. And it became a developmental program. And you could see that it kind of gave away to... And you could, if you're a follower of the network, you know that I follow women's wrestling on the channel. Like, this is mainly like a women's wrestling channel, but we do cover the men sometimes. But it gave way to the WWE Women's Revolution era of the 2010s. Um, from 2016 through now, right? And so, NXT has always been kind of identified with women's wrestling. Like, really... Helping women's wrestling get to another level. But anyways. So Nick Khan gets there. And he changes NXT from that black and gold stuff that it was. That it that it was into, uh, you know, all these colors and stuff like that. And it was led by Toxic Attraction, right? So we had all of that to what we have now. Shawn Michaels took over the creative. And NXT has probably been... To me, in my opinion, neck and neck with Impact Wrestling slash TNA, what is going to be TNA in January, 
as the two best domestic programs in the country. Uh, you know, between AEW, WWE, you know, TNA, NWA, all that stuff. And we get to where we are now. So it's been just been airing on Tuesdays as regularly on the USA Network. But we also know that a new deal needed to be had for um for uh SmackDown, which was moving off of Fox. And we know that SmackDown had had the best relationship with Fox. Like uh, the WWE's relationship with Fox was I wanna say it was bad, but it was not where it should have been, like you've seen all these years with the USA Network, right? USA Network and WWE have had a great working relationship the last, really since the 80s, you know what I mean? Before Raw came out in 1993. And so, they've had that long-term relationship with each other. But it wasn't quite that on Fox. And plus, Fox was losing money on SmackDown. And I knew this was going to happen when I, as soon as I heard the deal back in 2018. When Fox bought the WWE, at that time, it was the biggest deal ever for a wrestling promotion. A billion dollars to run uh, SmackDown for five years starting in the fall of uh, 2019. And that was also the same year when NXT moved to Wednesdays into the USA Network. So, we knew that SmackDown was going to move to a new network. And... That's when I started thinking about Raw and NXT as well. Because I said, probably all of these deals are going to be changed up. But I also started considering once I heard that SmackDown was moving back to the USA Network. to you know, So the WWE is not losing their relationship with USA Network or NBC Universal at all. They're still going to have that relationship with them. It's just that NXT is going to be moving. So I knew Raw or NXT was going to move. I, I did not see USA keeping all three. Um, I said they're probably going to do two. They may keep Raw. Raw is the last one that we got to figure out where, what's going to happen with that one. But even if they don't, USA has SmackDown at least. And they played a lot of money for SmackDown. I believe it's the same billion dollars. It could be more than that um, for SmackDown. I, I don't remember how many years they have SmackDown, by the way, either. When it moves back to USA Network. Because we know SmackDown was on cable for a whole decade because it moved when it moved from okay so we know smackdown throughout the history 1999 it, it was on upn and then the upn merged with what was to become of the cw it was a joint venture between cbs and warner brothers remember that remember we had the wb network um against upn upn was on by cbs and so when they merged in 20 uh 2006 SmackDown was one of they, they kept some programs from both networks. It was the best rated programs for both networks they kept. Um and a lot of those programs eventually ended within a couple of years since they moved over to uh CW. So it was the best of both networks, but the best of UPN, the best of w, the, the, the WB. In 2008, SmackDown got canceled by the CW and the, and SmackDown stayed on broadcast and it moved to my network TV which is what used to be UPN. Uh, Fox owns my network TV. And they had SmackDown for two years. And then when that deal was up in 2010, they didn't resign over there. And that's when they went to uh, cable and they went to uh, NBC Universal Sci-Fi Network, which is a sister network for USA Network. And they were on Sci-Fi and then they moved to the WWE Network. Uh, where people had to pay for it to watch NXT, and then they went back to being free on USA Network. So, and that's where we are today. So, with SmackDown, SmackDown was on Sci-Fi with NXT for a while. Then that, and then in 2016, that that became SmackDown Live. Remember, and that moved over to Tuesday nights on, on USA Network until it moved to Fox uh, three years later. So, now USA has SmackDown back. So, SmackDown is, an, is, a, is a cable show again. It's a cable show now. And so, when you look at the totality of everything with the history of this, this, this stuff, Raw has been the one program that's really only moved one time in its history. It moved to... Uh, the Viacoms, which is also CBS, 
Spike TV or the National Network, which was what it was called at the time when it moved in 2000. And then when it was Spike TV in 2003, two years later is when the deal was up with Raw. So WWE has been known for signing like five-year deals. And Raw was like a five-year deal um, to be on there. And that was the Ruthless Aggression era. And then it moved over to USA in 2005, back to USA. And it's been there ever since. So, Raw for the last 18 years has been on USA Network. You know what I mean? And now we're looking at a situation where, okay, we don't have a Raw deal done yet. But I'm assuming that maybe they're going to keep Raw on USA now that they've moved NXT. But I knew one of the two were moving and I felt like NXT was the one that was going to move. So, NXT next season... In October of next year, next fall, it will be on a new network. It will be on the CW and not the USA Network anymore. And like I said before, I think it's a big deal for both sides. Let me get back to where the benefits are. For the WWE with NXT, they keep their broadcast present. Because one of the things that they lost with SmackDown is their broadcast present. Because SmackDown was the number one rated program for the whole wrestling industry the last five years. Um, well, really, since they've been on Fox, they've been getting around two over two million viewers a week. Uh, sometimes two point five million, and they've even been close to three million. Have gotten over that sometimes by being on Fox, a major one of the four major networks on all of TV. You know, to go with CBS, ABC, NBC. By the way, that SmackDown deal also includes specials like they used to have on the old Raw deal when they, when Raw first moved back to USA in 2005. They had specials, which was the Saturday main, Saturday main event, Tribute to the Troops on NBC. They're still going to have some specials on broadcast. So we will see some WWE on NBC next season as well. But with this deal, this is every week. This is a weekly basis. And... Fox being on, SmackDown being on Fox was huge for the WWE. I believe it's contributed to them making a lot of money because they had more eyeballs back on there. Because for a while, the WWE was exclusively on cable like we see with AEW right now. It was never on broadcast, I think, really since SmackDown moved off of my network TV in 2010. So, for a whole decade, they were on cable exclusively. And so, when they got back, when they got SmackDown on Fox... They had those eyes that hadn't seen the WWE for a good decade back on their product. And during that time, who was the guy that was, you know, running the show? Roman Reigns, right? Roman Reigns was the guy everyone's watching on there. He's the reason why the ratings are up because he turned heel. People are interested and divested into that character and it still are today. And so SmackDown, like I said, every week getting over 2 million viewers. Beating the hell out of Raw every week. Raw was, Raw used to be the number one brand for the WWE. Uh, it used to go back and forth. Um, when SmackDown first came out those first five, six years, they used to be back and forth um, as far as who used to get the bigger ratings. It used to be back and forth. But at, at, once, they, once SmackDown started to sour a lot more uh, at the end of the 2010s, you know, Raw really stuck number one. But SmackDown gave, got, became the A-brand. It, it got back on top. It was on Fox, a big network on Fridays. And one of the things that I was worried about in that deal with SmackDown going back to USA Network next year was that I was worried that the WWE was going to lose their broadcast presence. You know, if they couldn't find, uh, if they couldn't put Raw or, or NXT on the broadcast network, I was fearing that. That they will be back to being exclusively on cable, and right now it's not the best time to be exclusively on cable because the cord the cord cutting has gotten to an all time high with uh, with cable, and so I didn't I didn't think it was a good situation for the WWE to be in. We turned the page on this year. We got new owners, Endeavor TKO, right? So you knew that you knew the TV deals weren't going to be quite the same as they were under the McMahon leadership. We knew that potentially NBC Universal was going to keep all three. So, I knew one of them was going to change. And when the CW stepped... No, when the rumors came around that they were going to get NWA. So, Billy Corgan probably made a mistake with leaking the information. Because one thing you don't do in business, you don't leak your deals before the deals are made, bro. 
And he was already kind of glossing over, oh, we're going to be on the CW Network. I was like, damn, dog, you leaked that? <laughs> you leaked that, bro? Because if there was other bidders and suitors, you just kind of scrapped yourself out of the out of that, man. But it let me know when he when he said that, though, the good thing about him saying that is that it let us know that the network was interested in getting back into pro. But it, it, it's new owners now, so I shouldn't say back because it's new owners now. Uh, that you know they're owned by Nextstar, right? Nextstar owns the CW, and the CW has been a different network since they've been owning it. They've only owned it for I think for like a year now. But they've been making a lot of deals, especially sports-wise, which is something the CW has never had outside of SmackDown in the 2000s. They had never really had sporting deals. They got Live Golf first. That was their first foray into it. Then they got college football. Uh, college basketball is going to be on there this winter. Um, and then they got uh, NASCAR. They got a NASCAR deal, which is really big for them. But that doesn't start until 2025. And they've been uh, rumored to be trying to get a deal with the NBA. They've gotten inside the NFL, which was on premium cable for so many years. They've gotten that, and that's already been on the network this fall, and it's been doing quite well in the, in the demo for the network. So they've got all these sports programs, and they've been doing pretty well. They've been, been doing pretty well with college football so far. And it's just been a different network. It, 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 the CW was always sort of this uh, like teen-specific targeted uh, network, you know, Teen shows and stuff like that. that. There was a bunch of shows that I used to like from that network that they used to air. Um, stuff like the Vampire Diaries and stuff like that that they used to have on there. 90210. What else did they... The Gossip Girl. Um, what else did they used to have on there, man? A lot of the comic book shows like The Flash. Uh, uh, Superman and Lois has been on there recently. Uh, Arrow... Uh, just a ton of different shows. Walker's on there now. Walker, Texas Ranger reboot. Like, they got a ton of shows on there. All American, um, that stuff. And there's a ton of shows, right? Targeted towards that audience. But they've been changing lately what they've been targeting. And so, one thing that I knew is that they're trying to build up their sports division that they have now under Nexstar. And when Billy Corgan came out with that information about NWA, I knew they were interested in pro wrestling. And I said, since that deal isn't a fit, I thought it was a done deal. When Billy Corgan announced it, I thought it, I thought it was him announcing it. And then when I found out it wasn't official yet, I was like, oh, shit, he might have messed up. So I started looking at, like, because I remember Scott Namor from TNA said that they're in a really good situation because they're owned by Anthem. Like, the company is owned by Anthem and the network that they're on, that they're on is owned by Anthem. So I always felt like TNA was in a safe situation being owned by the network. You know what I mean? But he said that maybe we could get a second show on a different network, though, to kind of get our visibility up. And I was like, man, what if TNA could get a second show and put it on the CW to get their visibility up? Then I was looking at AEW because their deal was not finalized yet because I think their, their deal with this, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery has a lot to do with the NBA because, the, you know, there's been a lot of rumors going on. If NBA on TNT is going to stick, maybe they'll get M uh, NBC as a partner to help that deal out so that they can start airing the NBA Finals. Stuff like that, right? So the NBA deals are probably going to be announced sometime next year in 2024, right? You know, because that deal starts in 2020, fall 2025. So the 2025-2026 season is going to be the first year of the new TV deals for the NBA. So... Everyone's trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with that. A lot of people think that they're going to definitely return to the uh, to NBC. I hope they do personally because I uh, I grew up on the NBA on NBC brand back in the '90s, so with Jordan and stuff like that. So I'm definitely hoping they return over there, right? Um, but when it came to NWA, I said, "What if they?" One of the things that I want to know, and it, 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 we won't probably hear about this, but was the CW actually interested in getting SmackDown back? And maybe the thing that kind of scared them off was the price tag. Because one thing that you got to know about NXT, and this information was actually revealed on Deadline, is how much they pay for, how much USA currently pays for NXT right now. And I found out it was only $15 million a year compared to, I believe, the $200 million that Fox was paying a year for SmackDown. 
for uh, a billion dollar deal over five years. So when I found out it was 15, I said, holy shit, the USA got a real bargain on that one. And But I have heard that it's more, but I don't think it's significantly going to be anywhere close to what even USA is paying for SmackDown for the new rights coming up. Because I heard that's also a billion dollars over five years. Now, this NXT deal is for five years. So they're going to be on there through 2029 from what I heard. So basically the rest of this decade to the fall of 2029. They're going to be on there the next five years. So starting next October, they're going to be on there the next five years. They didn't have the financial figures out yet, but if it's more than 15, it's probably going to be double. If it's not exactly 30 million, my guess is it's nowhere close to over 100 million. I think it's somewhere between 30 and 100. So either way, that's still a great deal for the CW. Because the CW's main goal by 2025 is to be profitable again. Because they took a network that was bleeding in the, in the negative in the CW. And they've been trying to go cheaper with the network, but also getting aggressive with some of the sporting rights to get the ratings up, to get the ad revenue up, and all that other stuff, which sports does. Live sports does that. So, yeah, man, uh, this is a huge deal. But I think what I like about it the most is that I really understand the difference between broadcast and cable. And it's really become a little bit bigger over the last few years because of the cord cutting over the years with with um with cable and so there's a lot of viewers over the past four or five years that have been keeping up with smackdown and they're not going to be able to do that anymore once it moves back to cable and those viewers are going to miss out on you know following wrestling or following the wwe this is probably the only wrestling program that they were following if they weren't watching women's of wrestling over the weekend on syndication this is likely the only thing that they were following pro wrestling wise those of us that have cable we're able to follow everything. We're able to follow WWE, uh, AEW, uh, Impact slash TNA. You know, maybe even end up. But I think NWA's been on YouTube, right? And I think MLW was on. If it's not still on there, ML, uh, MLW was on, uh, what was that? Reels, right? Reels channel. So. That. Is a lot. Of change you know what I mean that is a lot of change and getting NXT gives them a chance to keep following wrestling it's a, it's a little different following NXT because it's developmental but it's still a WWE product and it's <laughs> hey for those of y'all that's been keeping up with Smackdown ain't no way ain't no look Smackdown before the draft was like really good like, really, really fucking good. Since the draft, it's been very mid. I, I haven't really... This is why I haven't been really up to... Not just because of time-wise, but SmackDown just really hasn't been that good since the draft to me outside of Roman Reigns and a few other things that's been going on on there. But it just really hasn't been that good. NXT has been good every single week under Shawn Michaels. And you're getting a way better product um, you just got to get used to the new characters and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure they're going to do a lot of things to maybe bring, like they did this just this past month where they brought in John Cena down there and uh, Paul Heyman and all these other uh, Undertaker and stuff like that to bring all these big stars, Becky Lynch and stuff to get people to get some eyes on NXT and get them used to watching the characters that are currently on there. And you're just you're going to get a chance to see the, the the wrestlers before they become stars, right? Uh, before they hit the main roster. So, in my opinion, it's a win for you guys. It's it's It really is a win for you guys. Even though you're going to be losing SmackDown, it's a win for you to be catching NXT wise why it's really good right now. And hopefully it stays that way as long as Shawn Michaels is running the program. I'm going to be honest. I think Shawn Michaels should be in charge of creative on the main roster. <laughs> I, I, I think it should be. Nothing against Triple H, but I think he should be in charge of the creative on the main roster because what he's done with NXT is unfreaking believable You know what I mean? It, it's been really unbelievable. But I do think Triple H has made a lot of good changes to Raw, though, over the past year that hasn't really been talked about. But Raw, had, Raw was terrible for about a good 10 15 years. Uh, it was a terrible product for the last 10, 15 years. 2022 was like, 2022 was like the first year where I was like, damn, Raw is actually watchable now. You know what I mean? Like, it's actually watchable now. 
And to me, NXT, I think, is going to benefit a lot just being on something like the CW. And the CW is available hey, everywhere. It's like 100 million homes. As long as you have antenna, you can get the CW. I know some people are talking about, man, I don't get it on YouTube. I don't even know why people even pay for YouTube TV because it's they don't carry that many channels on YouTube TV like you 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 guys are paying a lot of money for YouTube TV. Just go and get fucking regular cable. I swear to God, go get regular cable. If you're paying for YouTube TV, you might as well just go get fucking regular uh, cable because it is more. Uh, my friend pays for you. Uh, he, he actually went back to cable like a couple of months ago. He was paying for YouTube TV for the last two years. And he says his bills was more than what he was getting when he was paid on cable. And I know cable has even gone up themselves. That's how they keep getting cord cutters. But he says he's not paying as much on one of the tiers he's got on cable. And he says he gets more more channels. He gets all his broadcast channels, which is something you don't get with you. Because I don't think the CW is on YouTube TV. And that that's bad. Like, if you don't get at least all your, like most of your broadcast channels that you're supposed to get, why do you even have YouTube TV? YouTube TV, the only thing I see that's good about YouTube TV is uh, the DVR stuff and... Uh, uh, if you if you subscribe to Sports League Pass and um, Sunday Ticket, that's it. Like YouTube TV is not something you should even have as a replacement to cable because you're just gonna be paying way more than you paying for cable. You know, and I'm talking about like cable without the internet and phone and stuff. A lot of people don't even use the phone with cable no more like they used to because a lot of people don't even got landlines. They might use the mobile service, but I wouldn't even do that. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even fucking do that, dog. I just pay for the internet. And in in, in in the cable part. And try not to pay one of the high tier of the cables because that'll get you like at three hundred dollars a fucking month, which is unbelievable. You know what I mean? But you might as well get fucking like honestly, you might as well get fucking cable if you're paying for YouTube TV, bro. If you can't get the CW, it tells you how fucking terrible YouTube TV is. If you can't even get the CW. But you should be able to get the CW with an antenna. Um very easily i can actually i got a way i'm not even gonna i can't say it on here but i actually got a way where i could keep up with every wrestling show if i have cable or any subscription service like i could i could actually because that's actually the way i consume my wrestling now um except AEW. i still watch AEW live on dynamite for tbs but everything else man i don't watch uh wwe live like i used to uh i watch it like later in the night now so I got a way where I can watch it without having anything subscribed to any of them. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I think it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal for both. The CW gets what they want, which is a consistent addition for the next five years where you know you're going to get around a million viewers. And because WWE, WWE fans are loyal. They're loyal. You, They do suffer some losses every year. But with SmackDown, they've been, like, right at the same rate since the last four or five years. So... They, you're getting a consistent audience, you know, with the WWE. And that's that's huge for the CW because they're looking for something like that where they can get some consistency over the next few years, not pay that much. Because if you think about it, they're probably paying about the same as they, they pay for unscripted TV. So it just depends on how much they're paying a year because I heard they're paying more than $15 million, which is what USA is paying for. SmackDown, I believe, was two hundred million for Fox. I don't. Much, I'm not sure where the USA number is at right now because I'm still not even sure what the. I thought it was a billion, but maybe it's not a billion over five years. Um, it might be some smaller than that. But whatever it is, I'm pretty sure it's still more than what the CW is paying for NXT. Uh, the next five years. So this is huge, and the only thing is, I just need to know. If the show's going to be the same, I hope it's still the same. But I got a feeling they're going to try to make this a major third brand to try to keep the ratings up. That's my only fear with it. They need to keep it like the way it is right now. Uh, developmental, bringing in main roster stars every now and then, like Rhea, Becky, and stuff like that. Uh, whoever else they bring in from up there. They brought down Baron Corbin this year. Stuff like that. Mustafa Ali and uh, Dana Brooke, who's... But Dana Brooke and Mustafa Ali are released, though. But uh, you know what I mean. Um, and also what night is going to be on. Because 
The other thing that I want to talk about to close this out is where is Raw going? Is Raw staying on the USA Network? Because I was, uh, I actually, uh, I got interrupted on this video. So I ended up going to this uh, site before I got back to recording this. And a lot of us were discussing on this site, this forum site, where is, could USA actually be, I mean, could Raw actually be going to TNT or TBS to replace AEW? Because that could be in the play. Because I know with Warner Brothers Discovery, they're also looking at the NBA rights that are coming up, and they're looking if they want to re-up with the NBA, which I think they should because the NBA is always going to give you guaranteed ratings. But I know those, those rights are getting more and more expensive, though. But I did hear of a partnership with the NBA or NBC, like I was telling you guys before. If they could work that out, I believe they could do that to get the NBA Finals, their production of the NBA Finals on NBC or something like that. So maybe that's what they're going to do with the Warner Brothers Discovery deal. Similar to what you see with March Madness, uh, NCAA uh, basketball, where they have um, college basketball and uh, where they have college basketball on CBS. And TNT at the same time, TNT and TBS at the same time. So maybe we'll see a deal like that. But with Raw, it could be because it's a free agent. It could end up on TNT and TBS on Monday nights. That will be huge. That will be huge for TNT or TBS. And it puts the AEW in a difficult position because I don't know if AEW is in an exclusive. I can't imagine any, any deals that the WWE makes are exclusive. But if they did that and they can't move. They can't even move to USA uh, for AEW. AEW is going to be in a bad spot. They're going to have to really dig deep for a good deal. Uh, but if it's not exclusive, they might be able to stay on the same station, which would be weird. But I believe that's how it was back in the eighties with USA, because I know USA always had a relationship with the WWE. But going back to the eighties with Mr. McMahon. But I think with TBS, was it, was it, because I know Vince McMahon was on TBS in the early 80s, like before he moved to USA. He was on uh, TBS, I believe. Because there's this whole scandal thing or controversial thing that happened back in 1984 uh, with Mr. McMahon and, uh, when, when uh, he had WWF still on TBS. So I think there's something there, but that'd be interesting, though. That'd be interesting, though. And then what's left over for AEW and NWA? And I, I think Billy Corgan messed that up with NWA. How do you announce a deal before it's even officially made? And then the segment that I believe that they had on a pay-per-view uh, where a dude was snoring coke or something like that, that was crazy. I think it was James Mitchell, wasn't it? It was like he had coke on the table or whatever. Like, it was, that was bad. So he ruined the end. They probably ruined the NWA deal like that. But I think CW personally, I think they wanted SmackDown first, and then they grabbed NXT. And either way, grabbing NXT was going to be better than NWA for them. It's a bigger company, better, bigger brand, more viewers. Because I'm not even sure how NWA was going to perform on the CW. So it worked out for the CW that all of that happened if it, if it did come down to that. So. But yeah, man, it's a huge deal. Um, huge deal. Huge deal. And I'm glad more people will get eyes on NXT because it's been such a good product. Now I'm just wondering level up. Where's level up also going to go? Is it going to come off of Peacock? Or is it going to stay on Peacock? It, it, if I'm TK, TK or Endeavor, maybe look at Freeview. Amazon's Freeview. And put it on there. Because... That way, maybe they'll put that on Twitch. And because I see on Thursday Night Football, they get like 100,000 viewers every week watching the games if you have Prime. As long as you're subscribed to Prime, you have access to watching TNF on Twitch, live with other people, right, in the chat. If they did something like that for Level Up and put that on Freeview, like if they moved, if they moved uh, NXT to Friday nights from 8 to 10, and then you had Level Up staying the same time slot at 10 o'clock right after that, that would be huge. That will be huge, bro. That I think that'll be huge. And this is what I think Tony Khan has to smarten up. If anything changes with these deals, it raw goals to TNT or TBS. This is why you should have made, or you can still make, you still can make this move. Rampage into a woman's wrestling show. Because you could have sold that separately. 
you could have sold Rampage separately to another network just on the basis that they're going to show women's wrestling. I mean, that that would have been, you could have got a better time slot for it too. Like I said, it's going to be interesting because we're going to see what, what's going to happen. A lot's going to change next year just like it did in 2019 with the changes of the wrestling deals. A lot, a lot's going to change again in 2024. Um, but AW, this, this is a tough, tough, tough situation, but really good situation for NXT, though. I think NXT is going to be in a great situation for the next five years. My only hope is that their relationship with the CW is good so that CW thinks about re-upping them when 2029 hits and they can stay on that network for another five years or something like that, be on there a whole decade. You know what I mean? Because SmackDown, honestly... Didn't have the best ending on the CW and my network TV, you know, on their broadcast days. Um, the WWE has to improve their relationships with their broadcast partners for sure. That that's probably the one thing that they need to work on more than anything. They 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 got a great relationship with USA. That's the great thing about it. But they need to work on their relationships with these broadcast networks and make sure that the broadcast networks are making enough money from it and that they want to invest in these companies. So, we'll see what happens, man. Give me your thoughts on this. Give this video a like, share, subscribe, y'all. Thank y'all for watching this one after news to like.